Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with my first impressions of the Kennerton Atlas headphone amp. Um, this is a combination of not only a headphone amp but it can also be used as a headphone stand to hold your headphones and it also has a built-in DAC. This uh, currently sells for $435 that would be US dollars and it is from Kennerton Audio and they are out of St. Petersburg, Russia. This is a hybrid class A type amp with a tube on it and um, like I said it also it has a DAC which is a USB DAC uses one 6N 2J tube or a 6N 2P tube which you can see <laughs> I'll try to line this up a little bit so you can see it anyway uh, the specs on this the output power is rated at 500 milliwatts into 100 ohms the distortion is rated at 0.1 percent at 300 milliwatts into 100 ohms the signal to noise ratio is 88 decibels the DAC is a Burr Brown PCM 2702 and this amp uses an external power supply which comes with it and uh, the power supply is 18 volts DC. The amp also comes with um, a USB cable, actually a pretty nice looking one, and um, it comes with an instruction manual, just a couple pages, but I guess it's actually a user's guide, but anyway, helps you get the thing set up. So anyway, uh, the amp is approximately 9 inches tall and uh, this is real wood. I'm not sure what type of wood. It almost looks like, um, I would say, a, either an oak or a walnut probably. And uh, the base is glass and the base is about 8 inches square. And on the front you have your volume knob and you've got a uh, standard 6.3 millimeter quarter inch uh, headphone jack and then on the back you've got at the top here you've got your input switch which switches from either um, your RCA analog inputs or your USB digital input and then uh, right below that you've got your left and right RCA inputs you've got your USB input here and down below that you've got your 18 volt DC input and um, then you've got your power switch here to turn it on and off so anyway um, I've had this about a week and a half and I haven't had a whole lot of time to listen to it yet and um, usually I do my first impressions videos within a few days but I have been extremely busy with uh, my lawn care business the last few weeks. In fact, it's just been a really, July was a really busy month, so um, I'm trying to catch up on my reviews here. So, anyway, and did want to point out that because I do lawn care, I do wear very substantial hearing protection while I'm working. Otherwise, I wouldn't be, uh, be able to review headphones or headphone amps or those sort of things. So, I do try to take care of my hearing. So, anyway, um, like I said, I haven't ho had a whole lot of time with this yet. So, I'm just going to give you, you know, the, the things that jumped out at me at first about it. And I would say the sound, I would describe as uh, slightly warm, a little on the warm side of neutral. Um, not drastically on the warm side but just a little bit on the warm side of neutral 
and um, I would say a little on the bassy side of neutral, just a little bit of emphasis in the bass. Besides from that though, um, very clean, very detailed sound and um, I, no noticeable roll off in the treble at all. So even though it's a little on the warm side, it's not dark. The treble is still there. Um, the first thing I noticed, and this is only the second tube amp that I reviewed. The first was the Felix Audio um, Echo. And the difference is this is a hybrid type of amp and the Echo is a uh, OTL type. And um, the OTL amp can drastically change the sound of a headphone. Um, depending on the impedance, I mean an OTL is really made for um, you know high impedance headphones and this here uh, Kennerton recommends headphones from 30 ohms to 300 ohms with this and so I mean this is definitely usable with the high impedance headphones but it's not really required and uh, even though the Felix Audio you can run low impedance headphones it can drastically change the sound of them and that's not the case with this um, besides I mean basically what this does every headphone that I've tried with this makes it just a little bit warmer and a little bit more bassy but that's the extent of the change where with the uh, Felix Audio Echo um, you know it, it uh, drastically changed a few of the headphones like the Grotto SR80E um, in my opinion drastically changed it for the better and made it a fantastic headphone but on the other hand the Philips SPH 9500 I think it drastically changed it for the worse and you know really didn't sound good at all in my opinion where this amp doesn't do that it doesn't make a headphone better or worse just you know like I said makes it a little bit warmer a little bit bassier um, Something that uh, I was a little concerned about is this is described as not only an amp, it's also described as a headphone stand. So my concern was this has a tube and my experience with tube amps has been the Felix Audio Echo which gets extremely hot. I've actually measured the tubes at 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm thinking, okay, I put my headphones on this and melt my headphones or, you know, damage them or whatever because they're going to be that close. But that's not the case at all because this, um, being a hybrid type amp, doesn't work the same and the tube barely gets warm in this. I mean, I can actually put my fingers on the tube and touch it after it's been, it doesn't matter how long it's been on and not only does it not burn my fingers it's not even uncomfortable I mean it's just barely above room temperature the amp itself does put off a little bit of heat but um, once again not enough that it actually gets hot I mean you can feel a little bit of heat coming out the vents if you touch it but not enough that I don't think it would ever damage any headphones or anything like that you're definitely not going to get burnt on it so um, I guess you know it's fine to put your headphones on this even after it's been running for a while and you don't have to worry about the heat that's an issue um, basically um, you know I the little bit of time I have spent with this I really enjoy it um, the headphones I've used so far are, I've tried the um, Kennerton Magni, the Kennerton Valley, and the Kennerton Thrower with this. And um, all three of them sounded great. Um, once again, just, you know, a little bit warmer than neutral, but I really liked the way all three of those sounded with this. Um, I also tried the Grotto SR80 and got a really great sound out of it. It didn't change the sound the way the Echo did. Um, you know, it didn't make it as outstanding as the Echo did, but on the other hand, where the Echo, I think, really harmed the sound of the Philips SPH9500, this didn't do that. So, you know, basically every headphone I've tried with this is just 
you know, sounded really good. I really, um, you know, like I said, warms them up just slightly. Gives it just a, maybe a decibel or two of uh, extra boost in the bass. And, uh, but doesn't drastically change anything. Uh, doesn't seem to change the upper mids or treble. Doesn't make them dark at all. So, um, uh, besides from that, um, oh, the DAC. I did get a chance last night to try the DAC. And what I did is um, I hooked this up to my desktop computer, which is a, what is it? It's an HP desktop computer, and it's running on Windows 10. So um, basically, I just took the cable supplied by Kennerton, plugged it into the USB input, pl pl plugged it into a USB out on my AM or on my uh, computer, and uh, right away um, I got a message on my screen. Something I didn't, I don't remember exactly what it said. Something about setting up codecs or something like that. And anyway, I waited a couple minutes, and maybe two or three minutes went by, and it said setup complete. Uh, I went to tr try this, um, listening to YouTube, and it didn't work at first, but I don't know, maybe a minute or two later, it came on and seemed to be working fine. And then I, um, I ripped some CDs to my computer in um, full lossless resolution and got a chance to listen to that and I was pretty impressed it sounded really good I don't have another USB DAC to compare it to right now but um, I mean there, there was no comparison to listening to my headphones just directly through the computer using the computer's DAC and headphone output I mean this was infinitely better I mean just a huge huge improvement over using the headphone jack on the uh, computer itself so um, compared to like um, my my reference DAC is a benchmark DAC 1 which is a thousand dollar DAC and no it probably didn't sound as good as that but it wasn't that far away and I mean you know like I said uh, the DAC seems to be pretty decent and Definitely, without a doubt, not a doubt whatsoever, that it was a huge improvement over using the built-in DAC and headphone output of the computer. So, um, other than that, um, what I really need to do is spend some more time with this. And um, actually, I got another tube that I'm going to try some tube rolling too. So, um, in a couple weeks, when I get some more time on this, I'm going to do a part two to this video and get a little more into the sound and um, maybe compare it to another um, USB DAC and um, try rolling the tube and see what I come up with. So, um, maybe two or three weeks, I'm going to try to do part two of this video and give you some more information on this. But in the meantime, uh, the few hours I've spent with it, uh, very nice little amp, built-in DAC, built-in headphone stand. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video helped you in any way, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you're all welcome to join us over at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. Thank you.